This video contains content not suitable for viewers who suffer from cyberphobia. Viewer discretion advised. Created by some of the smartest people out there just to prove their mettle or for the sake of playing pranks, viruses have embedded themselves deep into the roots of computing. Malicious software, worms, trojans, and computer viruses are on the rise as hackers, spammers, and identity thieves seek new ways to steal information that can be used to empty bank accounts or spread electronic pandemonium. Well, as of right now, there are millions of viruses out there, and they get more and more threatening every day. Here's a look at the top 30 dangerous computer viruses. Jerusalem. This is one of the first MS-DOS viruses in history that caused enormous destructions, affecting many countries, universities, and companies worldwide. In 1988, the computer virus managed to infect a number of institutions in Europe, America, and the Middle East. The name was given to the virus after one of the first places that got acquainted with it, the Jerusalem University. The Jerusalem virus managed to infect thousands of computers and still remain unnoticed. Back then, antivirus programs were not as advanced as they are today, and a lot of users had little knowledge of the existence of computer viruses. Solar Sunrise Using a computer virus, hackers in 1998 penetrated and took control of over 500 computer systems that belonged to the Army, government, and private sector of the United States. The whole situation was dubbed Solar Sunrise after the popular vulnerabilities in computers that ran on operating systems called Sun Solaris. Initially, it was believed that the attacks were planned by operatives in Iraq. It was later revealed that the incidents represented the work of two American teenagers from California. After the attacks, the Defense Department took drastic actions to prevent further incidents of this kind. Brain Brain may not have been the most sophisticated virus, but in 1986 it was the first to really target PCs via Microsoft's DOS operating system. The virus ate up a huge chunk of memory and caused computers to display a message warning that they had been infected. It even told them who they should call to get disinfected. The original developers claimed they weren't trying to cause trouble. They created the virus as a means of copy protection for their medical software. But then someone else came along and copied that bit of code, and the virus spread. Explorer.zip the Explorer.zip worm appeared in the summer of 1999, following in the footsteps of Melissa. The worm deleted Word, Excel, and PowerPoint files, and randomly altered other types of files. The most dangerous computer viruses traveled via emails that appeared to be from someone the recipient knew. The message included a file that, if activated, showed a fake error message to the user. Unlike Melissa, this virus did not use Outlook to gather email addresses. Instead, it watched the inbox of the infected computer and then sent automatic replies to senders using the same email subject as the original message. Autorun This virus primarily targeted USBs and flash drives and established them as a major source of movement and propagation. It affected networks and all computers present on them. Once affected, the folder options would be disabled, the task manager would be, well, unavailable, and the virus itself would become the system's administrator. The virus would replicate itself on all the folders, therefore eating up all useful space on the hard disk, and making it extremely and evidently slow. The loss, you may ask, was in terms of useful data on millions of computers across the world. Fizzer while Fizzer wasn't as fast moving as Code Red, this virus was much more insidious. Fizzer was the first instance of a worm created for financial gain. Computers infected with Fizzer started sending out pharmacy spam. In other words, Fizzer didn't just take over your address book to spread for the sake of spreading. It used your address book to send out porn and pills spam. Fizzer was followed by better known spam inducing worms like So Big which became threatening enough that Microsoft even offered a $250,000 bounty for information leading to the arrest of its creator. Cyber 
Siricam. Siricam is a nasty little virus that appeared in July 2001 on PCs running Windows 95, 98, and Millennium. The worm appeared in emails with an attachment in Spanish or English saying greetings such as, Hi, how are you? And, como estas? If you launched the attachment, Siricam would install itself onto your infected computer. It would grab random documents and send them out on email addresses captured from your address book. It occasionally deleted files on the infected computer's hard drive and essentially changed them to nothing but gibberish and random HTML code. So big. So big was a computer worm in the sense that it replicated by itself, but also a Trojan horse, in that it masqueraded as something other than malware. The so big worm would appear as an electronic mail that would contain the text, see the attached file for details, or please see the attached file for details, something along those lines. The so big worm deactivated itself on September 10, 2003. On November 5th of the same year, Microsoft announced that they will pay $250,000 for information leading to the arrest of the creator, the so big worm. Magister. Magister is one of the most complex viruses and one of the most dangerous out there to hit the internet. Its victims, users of Outlook Express, were hooked by an infected email attachment. This virus, discovered in mid-March of 2001, sent garbled messages to everyone in the infected user's email address book. Attached were files pulled at random from the infected PC's hard drive, plus an executable file with the Magister code. This virus was not as widespread as many others, but it still was very destructive. Magister would overwrite hard drives and erase CMOSes and the flashable BIOS, preventing systems from booting. It also contained anti-debugging features, making it very hard to detect and destroy. Storm Storm tricks users into downloading it through email messages that seem to be about current news events. Users called it this because one of the messages had the subject, 230 dead as Storm batters Europe. Storm operates as a Trojan horse program, carrying a variety of different programs that can do different nasty things to a user's computer, such as making it vulnerable to remote control. It turned out to be a mother virus, instigating numerous hidden programs in the background which made the PC vulnerable and enticing to hackers. Poison Ivy Poison Ivy is a computer security nightmare. This virus allows the attacker to secretly control the infected user's computer. Malware like Poison Ivy is known as a remote access trojan because it provides full control to the perpetrator through a back door. Once the virus is installed, the perpetrator can activate controls on the targeted computer's system to record or manipulate its contents, or even use a computer speaker and webcam to record audio and video. Once thought as a tool for simple amateur hackers, Poison Ivy has been used in sophisticated attacks against dozens of Western firms, including those involved with the defense and chemical industries. Metropolitan Police Virus This virus blocks targeted computer systems and tries to get money from their users. It's a scam that uses the name of Metropolitan Police and blames users for breaking the law by watching and distributing pornographic content files. It changes their Windows registry and adds its malicious files to run its startup. Thus, whenever they try to log into their Windows operating system, or even in safe mode, They'll get a virus page instead of the desktop icon saying that your personal computer has been blocked. It also shows some screenshots from the webcam on the virus page and makes users into thinking their actions can be recorded and transferred to the police database. It can also display an infected computer's IP address, hostname, and even turn the webcam on automatically without their permission. This tricky virus is programmed with a single goal swindle the person who trusts this fake alert. It asks users to pay a fine of 100 pounds within 48 hours of Ucash or PaySafe card payment system. However, users should know these systems are based on payments using prepaid cards, and police would never use such methods to collect fines. 
Nimda. Nimda, spelt backwards, is admin. It was a worm that had the record of being the fastest ever virus to spread. It targeted internet servers and websites, creating a mass crater through which thousands of computers were affected at the same time. Once infected, the systems became exposed to open attacks by the outsiders. This virus debuted itself in 2001, immediately a week after the attack on the World Trade Centers. Some media began speculating a link between the virus and the attack on the World Trade Centers, which hasn't been proven yet. The virus spreads through the email and browsing of compromised websites. SQL Slammer. It was a worm that basically slowed down the internet traffic and crashed multiple servers. The worm infected the servers over UDP and fit themselves into a single packet, thereby slipping through all the ports in spite of the internet traffic and routers not functioning. This worm created major problems during that year and resulted in the worst case scenario in the tech field. Among its list of victims, Bank of America's ATMs, a 911 emergency response system in Washington state, and perhaps most disturbingly, a nuclear plant in Ohio. Alurion. Alurion, also known as TDSS, is a Trojan and boot kit designed to steal data by intercepting a system's network traffic and searching it for usernames, passwords, and credit card data. PCs usually get infected by manually downloading and installing Trojan software, and Alurion has been seen bundled with the rogue security software Security Essentials 2010. When the dropper is executed, it first hijacks the Spools VEXE to write a file system boot sector at the end of the disk and changing the master boot record to execute this bootstrap routine. It also manipulates the Windows registry to block access to Windows Task Manager and the desktop, blocking access to Windows Update and attempting to disable some antivirus products. Stuxnet Stuxnet was the very first computer virus designed specifically to cause damage in the real world, not the virtual world. Like we said, previous viruses before Stuxnet only caused physical problems indirectly by causing problems in the virtual world first. But Stuxnet? It was designed to target software systems controlling industrial systems, which can then cause damage to all the machinery controlled by those systems. It was created to damage Iran's uranium enrichment facility in Nantans, and data from the International Atomic Energy Agency revealed that Stuxnet caused a large number of Iran's centrifuges to go nuts and self-destruct. The virus was discovered in 2010, but experts believe that it had infected computers in Iran since 2009. Many speculate that the U.S. government and Israel worked together to create Stuxnet. Klez Klez gave the antivirus programs a real problem by simply disabling them and making them look like a joke. After it was thought to be defeated, it was taken over, decoded, and customized by hackers who specialize in unauthorized penetration. Its ability was enhanced by providing it with the capability to spoof from the user's address book and make it look like an email from them, increasing the chances of the receiver opening the email and becoming the next casualty. The Klez virus was known to affect Windows systems, eclipsing the antivirus in the systems and posing itself as a virus removal tool. It, again, spread in the conventional way of attachments and sent itself to various contacts of the victim. Some variants of the virus created immense damage by rendering one's computer as inoperable. CIH CIH, better known as Chernobyl virus, had an outbreak in the late 1990s that wiped out internal hard drives. What made CIH so dangerous is that shortly after activated, it would overwrite the data on the host PC's hard drive, rendering it inoperable. It was also capable of overwriting the BIOS of the host, preventing boot up. Because it infected executable files, CIH wound up being distributed by numerous software distributors, including a demo version of an Activision game named Sin. The virus was responsible for around $6 billion damage in total. The special thing about this virus was that it was actually an attempt by the creator to test the antiviral efficiency of packages out in the market. Blaster Blaster, also known as MS Blast, was first reported in the summer of 2003. The virus was detected on August 11th and spread rapidly, peaking in just two days. 
transmitted via network and internet traffic. This worm exploited a vulnerability in Windows 2000 and Windows XP, and when activated, presented the PC user with a menacing dialog box indicating that a system shutdown was imminent. Although the worm can only spread on systems running Windows 2000 or Windows XP, it can cause instability in the RPC service on systems running Windows NT and Windows Server 2003. If the worm detects a connection to the internet, this can even lead to the system becoming so unstable that it displays the following message and then restarts. Sasser The Sasser worm exploited the vulnerability in the network ports and infected the host computers. The specialty of the Sasser virus was that it didn't spread through email attachments. Instead, it would first scan the IP addresses of potential computers and then infect them. Sasser began spreading on April 30th, 2004, and was destructive enough to shut down the satellite communications for some French news agencies. It also resulted in the cancellation of several Delta airline flights and the shutdown of numerous companies' systems worldwide. Unlike most previous worms, Sasser was not transmitted via email and required no user interaction to spread. Instead, the worm exploited a security flaw in non-updated Windows 2000 and Windows XP systems. When successfully replicated, the worm would actively scan for other unprotected systems and transmit itself to them. Infected systems experienced repeated crashes and instability. The virus was actually created by a 17-year-old German student, but because of his young age, he served no jail time. He was, however, sentenced to 21 months probation and some community service. Morris. This computer virus infected over 6,000 computer systems in the United States alone, including the famous NASA Research Institute, which for some time remained completely paralyzed. Due to the erratic code, the worm managed to send millions of copies of itself to different networks of computers, being able to entirely paralyze all network resources. The damages caused by the Morris computer virus is estimated at about 96 million. This virus is also known as the Internet Worm of November 2nd, 1988. It is considered the first worm as well as the first one to gain significant media attention. It also resulted in the first United States conviction under the 1986 Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. It was written by a student at Cornwell University. His name is Robert Tapp Morris and launched on November 2nd, 1988 from MIT. Agent.BTZ Agent.BTZ infected the entire Pentagon, and they even had to issue a ban on all flash drives. The U.S. Cyber Command Department was created because of Agent.BTZ. Military IT experts found the virus on Pentagon computers in 2008, and they suspected it was the work of foreign spies. Former Deputy Secretary of Defense wrote that Agent.BTZ was capable of creating a digital beachhead, which can be used to transfer data to servers under foreign control. The worm was pretty sophisticated, and it took the Pentagon nearly 14 months to clean it entirely from other systems. Win32 Fake Sysdef, or Windows32 Fake System Defragmenter, this is a Trojan horse targeting the Microsoft Windows operating system that was first documented in late 2010. It was originally dispersed as an application called HDD Defragmenter, hence the name Fake Sysdef or Fake System Defragmenter. This virus manifests as one or more of an array of programs that purport to scan your computer for hardware failures related to system memory, hard drives, and system functionality. They scan the computer, show false hard drive issues, and present a remedy to defrag the hard drives and fine-tune the system performance. They then request, from the user, a payment in order to download the repair update and activate the program in order to repair these contrived hardware issues. My Doom probably one of the deadliest and most threatening viruses ever created in computer history. My Doom was a computer virus affecting Microsoft Windows. It was first sighted on January 26, 2004, and became the fastest spreading email worm ever. Unlike other viruses, My Doom attacks the search engines by sending multiple phony requests to them, 
thereby making them slow and causing them to crash. It would also duplicate emails and send them over the network, causing a lot of damage and loss to various companies. My Doom appears to have been commissioned by email spammers so as to send junk email through infected computers. The worm contains the message, I'm just doing my job, nothing personal, sorry, leading many to believe the worm's creator was paid to do so. Early on, several security firms published their belief that the worm originated from a professional underground programmer in Russia. The actual author of this worm is unknown. Configure. The computer security company F-Secure stated that the computer virus had infected 3.5 million computers worldwide. This malicious program was able to spread using a patched Windows flaw. Configure was so successful in spreading across the web because it used a flaw that Microsoft patched in October in order to distantly compromise computers that ran unpatched versions of Microsoft's operating system. Unlike other viruses, it doesn't do anything harmful on its own. Instead, it essentially created a massive botnet army of remotely controlled computers. These botnets can steal financial data and a lot of other personal information. Strangely, even though Configure had infected millions of computers, no one really knew what it was meant to do. The botnet army was never activated to be used for any specific purpose. The Configure virus appears quite high on this list because it infected not just commercial entities and individual computers, but also computers of various governmental organizations such as the French Navy, the UK Ministry of Defense, the Unified Armed Forces of Germany, and a whole lot more. Zeus. This is a botnet toolkit that creates malware and is mainly used to collect data, steal identities, and bank information. How lovely. Zeus is particularly difficult to deal with as it can create others to steal any data stored on your computer. It is primarily spread through drive-by downloads and publishing schemes. First identified in July 2007 when it was used to steal information from the United States Department of Transportation, it became more widespread in March 2009. Code Red The Code Red virus bloomed into existence during the summer of 2001 and exploited the vulnerability in the indexing software within the IIS server in the internet. It caught security experts off guard by exploiting a flaw in the Microsoft Internet Information Server. It didn't require you to do anything at all to become infected by this virus. All it took was an active internet connection for the virus to take advantage of a flaw in the Windows operating system. The virus turns your computer into a slave, letting someone off-site operate it remotely. That means they could steal whatever was on your computer, or even use your computer to do terrible things. The virus managed to force government agencies to temporarily take down their own public websites, as well as infect the web servers in the White House. Though later worms have since overshadowed Code Red, it's still remembered by antivirus experts as a turning point for malware because of its extremely rapid spread. Melissa. Melissa, named after a dancer in Florida, is probably one of the most dangerous viruses to have affected computer systems. Spreading through email attachments, the virus replicates itself once activated and dispatches the replicates to 50 of the contacts in the email address book of the user. Estimates have indicated that this word macroscript infected 15 to 20% of all business PCs. The virus spreaded so rapidly that Intel, Microsoft, and a number of other companies that use Outlook were forced to shut down their entire email system in order to contain the damage. The email messages contained the sentence, Here is the document you asked for. Don't show anyone else. <laughs> a little ominous, right? With the attached Word document, clicking open on the doc file, and thousands of unsuspecting users did so. This allowed the virus to infect the host and repeat the replication, also adding insult to injury. Once activated, this virus modified the user's documents with quotes from animated TV shows such as The Simpsons. It led to the stop in the email system for a while, until this virus was stopped. Though the virus didn't cripple the internet networks, it definitely caused terror and shock for those in the technological era. I love you. Back in 2000, 
millions of people made the mistake of opening an innocent looking email attachment labeled simply, I love you. Once opened, the worm overwrote important files as well as music, multimedia, and more with a copy of itself. It also sent the worm to everyone on a user's contact list. This particular worm only affected computers running on the Microsoft Windows operating system. While any computer accessing the email could receive the I love you email, only Microsoft Windows systems could be infected. The virus is known to attack the system's hard drive first, and then the registry keys. And all the while, it continues to copy itself and entrench itself deep within the files and folders of the computer. I love you caused a wide scale of problems for computer users and only took hours for it to become a global pandemic. The virus is thought to have originated somewhere in the Philippines and did around 8 to 10 billion dollars in damage. Crypto Locker This particularly nasty virus, first discovered in September 2013, is a Trojan horse ransomware that targets computers running Microsoft Windows. A crypto locker attack can come from various sources, one such is disguised as a legitimate email attachment. When activated, the malware encrypts certain types of files stored on local and mounted network drives using RSA public key cryptography, with the private key stored only on the malware's control servers. The malware then displays a message offering to decrypt the data if a payment through either Bitcoin or a prepaid voucher is made by a stated deadline. It threatens to delete the private key if the deadline passes. If the deadline is not met, Malware will then offer to decrypt the data via an online service provided by the malware's operators for a significantly higher price in Bitcoin.